it's seven o'clock on a Tuesday night and where else would I be but here with you. DJ Stutz here with Little Hearts Academy USA and Imperfect Heroes Podcast and I'm so glad that you're spending a few minutes with me. Well, today we are talking about mom stress, mom guilt, right? And we all deal with it. Um, every mom ever ever, ever <laughs> has dealt with mom guilt. So, you know, your kid gets in a little bit of trouble and it's like, oh, what did I do wrong? Your kid gets in a lot of trouble. What did I do wrong? Right? Um, sometimes it's, uh, oh, am I, I, I get angry too quickly or I, um, why can't I get him to do what I need them to do? Or they're getting in trouble at school. Uh, and it happens, even to the best moms, Kids are free to make the choices they make, and then we have to all deal with the consequences of what it goes. Then there's some other issues, though, too. Um, moms who have to go back to work. And, man, I've had so many friends who, you know, they have their new little babies. They have their six weeks or three months off. It just depends on where you work and who you work for on how much time you get off. But then, you know, you got to leave that sweet little thing with uh, someone else who's going to watch them while you go off to work. And so I've had so many friends and, and parents that I've coached that have just said, oh, I just feel so bad leaving them, you know. And and uh, so then we've got some questions to ask and whatever. But, um, you know, there are a lot of working moms out there and they're trying the best they can and they're good moms. They are good moms. And then maybe uh, there's a situation where, you have a little one that came too early or something's really wrong and they're in the neonatal intensive care unit, the NICU. Um, and sometimes they're there for a long time, six months or maybe even more. And at some point you've got to go back to work and here you've got this baby in the hospital and you're leaving to go to work and your heart is breaking and you're dealing with that mom guilt. Let me add some more to that. <laughs> Okay, you have this sick little baby and you've got to go to work and you've got other kids at home, older kids, healthy kids that need their mom and dad. How do you manage all of that? How does all of that work, you know? And I've seen parents just torn to pieces over, you know, how much time do I spend at the hospital with the baby? How much time do I spend with my three-year-old or my five-year-old or whatever? Because they're worried about the baby too. They're confused. They were planning on this little brother or sister coming, right? And uh, and now the, it's here, but it's not here. And and how old they are and what they can understand. But even if they're really young, they get that something's up. And so how do you explain that to them? And how, how do you divide your time through all of that? That's just something that's really hard to figure out. Well, the guest that I have on the podcast this week, man, she's awesome. And her name is Susan Landers, and she's a doctor. She and, in fact, she is a neonatologist, which means that she has spent over 30 years working in the NICU, the Newborn Intensive Care Unit. And um, she has had this work of saving, you know, little teeny, teeny one-pound babies sometimes. And, and... And that's important work. Her husband's a physician. And then she had three kids at home. And she's trying to manage all of that. And so she gets all of those scenarios that I just talked about, she's been through, right? Either she, she went through it as a physician. She also went through it as a mom. So she, here she was, you know, this well-known physician and she has her first pregnancy and there are issues and so she's got to stay down and all of a sudden she goes from being the doctor to the patient and that was actually a great experience for her because understanding what parents are going through when their little one is in the NICU um, as a parent is very different than looking at it as a doctor. And so now that she had that experience, um, she was able to relate to them on a more personal level. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Anyway, they, um, they 
are are just so torn apart and she knows what to say. Well, in our podcast, right, we talked about that. We talked about mom guilt. We talked about all those scenarios. And I'll tell you what, even if you are financially stable and you are able to be an at-home mom and uh, you, you have a strong uh, marriage, a great relationship, uh, you've, you live in a good neighborhood, your kids are able to go to good schools, you got all those things going on, guess what? You're, you're going to have mom guilt too. Yeah, it happens to everybody. And so um, Dr. Landers is just so amazing. And so I signed up actually for her uh, newsletter. She puts something out about once a week and they're just fantastic. The uh, articles she writes and, and the opinions that she has um, are fantastic. And guess what? I don't have to agree with someone on everything to appreciate what they have to offer. And isn't that a wonderful thing that we can come together and say, oh, this makes total sense, right? Okay. So I want you to think about with mom guilt. Now, if you're a husband, is there such a thing as dad guilt? Yup, there is. There's such a thing. <laughs> and so we want uh, dads to kind of listen in, but I know that dads take it very differently. And I've got some great dad episodes that are coming up. I just have had a couple of dad episodes. Uh, if you look at the most recent was from December 26th. It dropped the day after Christmas. Yeah, and um, and Mark Payson, he's a fantastic dad of two daughters, and so we're catching you too, dads. Don't worry about ya. But um, I want you to really think about how you can support each other too, because in a strong marriage, you know you're going to have to sometimes divide and conquer, right? With some of the things that you've got to do and going on, you're going to need to be able to support one another. And the hard thing is that we tend to treat our partner in the way that we want them to treat us, right? And yet people process things very differently. And so some people uh, may draw back they, when things are hard or whatever, and they've got to process that internally. And so someone who uh, is very uh, extroverted and needs to talk about it and talk, they may feel like, oh, they're withdrawing, they don't care, this means nothing to them. And we start assigning all of these things to the other parent. And uh, that aren't the case. They are just processing internally. And so we need to know our partners well enough. Hopefully by the time we're having a baby with them, we know them pretty well, <laughs> right? But to say, oh, he needs some time or she needs some time alone to process. Now, if you're the loner person, right, and you have an extroverted partner, you're going to need to understand, oh, he or she needs to talk my ear off <laughs> and work through every little detail. And, and that's okay too. And so you're just, and you don't need to solve all the problems because as an extrovert who is married to a very, very introverted person, um, you know, it's it's okay to say, oh, I don't need to solve all that person's problems. They just need to be heard. Or I need to say, he needs time to process and I need to back off. And so when you start making those assessments, you're going to get through things much better, whether it's a sick child or a child that's misbehaving or a child that has some kind of a de developmental disorder or sensory issues or whatever it is, that you're going to be able to work on it together. So I have some friends um, back in Denver, and they have, I think, five kids, four or five kids. They're all grown up, and so I don't know all of their kids. I've met some of them and some of their grandkids. But they have a son who was injured horribly in a, a tubing, like tubing, snow, snow tubing, um, accident when he was 16 to the point that um, he's now in his mid-30s. I think he's like 35, 38, somewhere around there. And uh, he has to live at home. He needs to have constant care, but he can talk. He's able to walk. They said he would never walk. And he doesn't walk 
like you or I, probably, but he struggles with walking, but he's got it. He's got his cane. His speech is very slow, very slurred sometimes, but what a great personality this guy has. He loves telling jokes and all of this. Well, when all of this happened, there were doctors who actually said, um, you need to just put him in an institution and move on with your life because uh, like there was this high number, I think like 80% or probably even higher of marriages fail when uh, an accident of this magnitude happens to a child and they ha then they realize that they will be the caregivers for the rest of their lives. They're, he's not getting married and going off and having a career and doing all of that. That's just not going to happen. You're going to be taking care of him for the rest of your life. And um, But these two have come together in such strength and what they did, and they could, and, and they did for a while with why did we let him go? And, you know, uh, it was a scouting thing. Like, who, who could have known? But you beat yourself up over it, right? Scout masters that were in charge beat themselves up over it. I mean, it's just um, a sad, it's just a sad situation. And yet I look at this family and I look at how they have excelled and they've been, um, fantastic. In fact, they even had kids that were, uh, some of you will remember Columbine High School and the tragedy that happened there so long ago. And um, their home, they lived close enough that their home was actually a refuge for some of the kids that were fleeing the school and getting away. They came to these, this, these, this family's home. And uh, it's so, I mean, they've just had a lot going on in their lives. They had children who were at that school when all of it happened. And yet, they have just been so strong because, because they understood each other so well. And they were able to, um, the husband was able to understand what the wife was needing. And the wife was able to understand what the husband was needing and they were meeting each other's needs and they came together. Of course, faith is a huge part of that story. They came together in faith and in love and in expectations of this is going to be okay. We're all going to manage through. It's a different path than we had planned, but it's not a bad path. We're fine. We have this amazing son that's going to be with us and, and uh, they've turned into just these caregiving personalities and you know it's funny when someone in the neighborhood uh, needed help this is the family that's the first ones there to help out and and to give service and so you know you can you can sulk in the guilt right um and it's okay to acknowledge the guilt i feel bad but okay is this is a situation if you feel bad enough is there something that you need to do to change your situation or is there something that you just need to do to understand your situation and and understand how to move forward within it? Because this is what you've been given, right? And so I I just love this episode. I hope you'll go and listen to it. It's uh, Dr. Susan Landers. It dropped yesterday. And so I think that's what, 81? What is today? 82. It's episode. <laughs> 82. I can't keep track of the days, but I would love to uh, hear what you think about it. And so please feel free to leave a comment here on uh, the website or on the, my Facebook. You can email me and let me know what you think or leave a rating and review and say exactly what you thought about the episode. I love to hear about it. And I think you're going to love Susan. She is fantastic. And uh, like I said, I've continued to follow her and to um, bask in the light that she brings. And so until next week, Let's find joy in parenting. See you later, guys.